Welcome back to Fairy Tale Anime Review, episode number 32, 52. This is reviewing the 320th episode of the anime Neo Eclipse. This episode pretty much just covers chapters. I believe it's. I look it up on here. I think it was like five. I think it was like five. Oh yeah, it's uh, five twenty nine, five thirty, and Wish Upon a Star, which is a which is basically one of the one shots for Fairy Tale. Okay, fine. This episode has got most. This episode mostly it's a flashback episode. Though it's a good flashback. Mm -hmm. I like other flashbacks I've seen. Basically, they'd be very violent. Not the case of this one. Nope. Episode starts up pretty much where last week's episode was off. We have Anna Harphilia. Yes, the woman from last week's episode who showed up is in fact Lucy's ancestor, Anna. Who, and get this, the Christine who was revealed in this episode to be something was built to make sure that Dragon Slayers who have motion sickness, because all Dragon Slayers do, can function perfectly fine without suffering motion sickness. Yep, so, yep, so Anna was able to calm her down, and, well, Wendy is able to remember her. Yep, so, and unlike in the previous, like, oh, oh, Lucy? No, I'm not Lucy. Yeah, I don't know why they changed that part, I thought it was a little bizarre. <laughs> so she pretty much explains, like, how she got here. She got here pretty much the same way the dragon showed up during the Grand Magic Games arc. The Eclipse Gate. Yep. Making its return. First time since the Grand Magic Games. Yeah. <laughs> Though they don't show the clips of the dragons attacking the capital. Nope. They don't show that. But they do show off. Well, apparently, uh, it's, uh, they go off to 777, which is, from what I can tell, about 20 years before the events, the ser before events of the current, where the series is right now. Yep. Yeah. 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we see the princess and her bodyguard. Well, the guy who later became joined the armies. Yeah, he's there. They're there in the flashback. Of course, they're, she's a adorable little girl. Oh, yeah. And something weird about the king. He looks exactly the same as he did back then. Yeah. As for why the heck he looks exactly the same, I would think he'd be a little bit older than that, but... Also, apparently, he's the same height as he was back then, which, that is actually bizarre. I get why, appearance-wise, he looks exactly the same, but why the heck is he the same height? <laughs> it makes no sense at all. Yep. So, apparently, it's revealed how Anna got to present day, via the Eclipse Gate. How the hell this is explained is that, apparently, she wrote a book, and it was passed down through her family for multiple generations for the past 400 years, and Lila... Lucy's mother got her hands on it, opened the gate, and apparently opened the gate also shortened her life. So they would live a normal life with her family. Of course, as you mentioned, the adorable Lu Lucy, with Lu Lucy when she's an adorable little girl. And, well, basically, she's going to investigate a couple things like first, this abnormal magic, and of course, finding the five children, aka Natsu, Ganjo, Wendy, Sting, and Rogue. Sting and Rogue do not make appearances in this episode, it's Ganjo. Natsu does. Yep. And they're explaining as well being chased by Agnologia. And, well, they're being... They, they mainly, they have, like, the primary, like, five people from Blue Pegasus. Mainly they're... Not their guildmaster, per se, but one, one of their high officials. Ichio, along with the, the, the triplet, the three guys, and Jenny. Whose dress is still torn up? I would think that on the, that when they went back to their HQ, when everything was packed normal, I would think that she would have gone quickly to her house. I get why the guys pretty much wouldn't have time to change their clothes, but Jenny, Jenny, I'm sure she probably would love to change her out, change her dress to something a lot more nicer than those shreds she's wearing now. So they fire like a blast at Agalogia. That does nothing. It causes him to eat the damn thing, and basically causes him to look like he's a fat dragon. Okay, and they, then they fire, like, actual lead at him. Like, bullets. Which do nothing to him. He just dodges them. Okay. So, while this is going on, Natsu and Zerp are basically fighting at the guild hall. And we all see a little bit of Lucy and Grey. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
where they discuss some stuff. Of course, Lucy does not know her ancestors in present day. She does not know at all. I hope they eventually do have like a little tele oh, telepathy scene where they do this. And of course, while Annie is telling the story, the ship is being rocked back and forth because all like trying to dodge from Agaloga and they're trying to drag Agaloga to this rift in time, which is the size of a halo. Well, a little fruit. That's the size of this damn thing. So basically, we're going to something the size of a freaking baseball. Okay, fine, whatever. And of course, apparently, Zeref was basically excited by fighting his own brother. So apparently, he traps in some kind of strange black magic. Apparently, he wants maybe his magic power so badly. And the reason why he does it because he wants to get Mavis's power and the Rift of Time to restart everything from scratch. Why? So we can end his immortality. Yeah, that's pretty much just of it. And apparently he thinks that Natsu is a stronger being. He actually is. And as what goes on with Lucy and Gray, Happy suggests opening the book of END. Okay. Which that's going to happen next week's episode anyways, but... Yep. This overall was a really good episode. I'm surprised that we haven't, like, I'm curious to, like, what is everyone else up to during this whole mess? Yeah, I get that we have, like, mo most of the main characters, like, the primary starring characters in the series. Also, where the heck is Carla? Yes, where is Carla in all this? She's missing. I mean, she's not with Jalal and Urza. I'm surprised Urza did not take the time while... They were distracted to briefly go grab her mother's dead body and bring it on board. Yep. <laughs> As for what happens to that body, no idea because the series never bothers to explain what happened. So I know it was desecrated, but I'm sure that Urza m must have taken the time after this whole battle was over. She must have basically found the body afterwards and gave it a proper burial. Probably buried in that cemetery where also Lucy's parents are buried. Mm-hmm. Just a nice gesture. And probably kept her clothes while she's at it, too. Probably kept the nice hat that she sliced in half. She probably sewed it back up. Probably kept her collection of stuff. Mm hmm This overall, really good episode. Definitely looking forward to next week's episode. Which, yeah, I've changed the... the I'm used to Funimation House one. Next week's episode is called Blind to Love. Yep, that's the name of next week's episode. And what I looked up, basically, line, apparently by episode 324, they're only going to get to... 538, which is interesting. So, in just four episodes after this one, only covering eight chapters. So that means, as of chapter episode 524, there'll only be about seven episodes, seven chapters left to our depth. So, my guess is this is probably what's going to happen. That episodes 525, 325, 327 are going to cover. 539 to 544, and the final episode is going to cover the final... It's probably going to do this. It's probably going to adapt the final chapter of the series, probably also adapt the first chapter of Century Quest. That's my first thought there anyways. What's going to happen for episode 328, because it has been confirmed, uh, like last month, that that will be the final episode of this series before it gets relaunched at Century Quest. Mm -hmm. Which I know Todd Epicor wants to see that. So do I. And so my friend Edgar wants to see that too. Which I'm sure that the dubcast from, from this series will come back for that one. And I haven't heard anything if Eden Zero is slated to be, at, be adapted for anime yet. I mean, it's been out for almost 60 chapters, so that's enough for almost about 30 episodes right there. Unless, of course, they want to just do like one or two chapters per episode. But that, that all depends on what studio picks up. I'm hoping it's A1 Pictures because, well, makes sense. They would probably would do a fantastic job with it, like they would fairy tale. Mm -hmm. That's just my personal thing when it comes to the matter of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's it for this particular view. I have no idea what it's planned for today, though tomorrow you have at least one video planned for tomorrow, and that'll be a review of the newest chapter of Seven Deadly Sins. Yep. Until we see you next video. Bye.